Hello everyone. Welcome to Professional Cipher. So today we are going to deal with support vector regression, short called as SVR. Today we are going to deep dive into implementation of SVR, the efficient ways of implementing SVR using the SKLearn library. A short brief on SVR. Before jumping to SVR, we have to know a little bit history on SVM. There is already a detailed video on SVM and the implementation of SVM in our channel Professional Cipher. So do check it out before this. Coming to SVM, what SVM tries to do is it, it tries to create a tube-like structure and tries to keep the data away from the tube, thereby creating clusters. So instead of just creating a single line or plane and dividing the data here what it tries to create is a tube like structure and keep the data away from the tube thereby on a big picture uh, it tries to reduce the average error in some sense we can see support vector regression this is the support vector machine concept the algorithm in support vector regression it's just the opposite here we are trying to keep the data inside the tube so our whole aim is to keep the keep all the data inside the tube. So instead of focusing on each individual data and getting each data right, what we are trying to achieve here is on a collective level, decrease the error. So such that think of something like if the tube is well defined, if the parameters are well hyperparameterized and we get the best parameters so that all the data is inside the tube. So on a collective level, the error will be very low. Okay, so let's see both in action, right? You are already familiar with linear regression, which is a simple algorithm. What it tries to do is, uh, it tries to portray a line such that all the points are on very short distance from the line. So here, this is a non-linear data. So in real life, you always get non-linear data points to act on and to predict values around. So here you can see that the line fails miserably because of the bias due to these data points. But on the contrary side, the SVR, the tube-like structure created here, succeeds in keeping all the data inside the tube, thereby reducing the collective error, if you can understand. So this is what we are going to implement today. So the major library which we will be using is SKLearn. So a dummy data which I am using today is data.csv. Uh, you can see here what it is. We have date y x1 and x2 so i have not named anything specifically because this is applicable to any case so you might have understood uh, x1 and x2 are the independent variable and y is the dependent variable so we are trying to predict y through x1 and x2 the date is not of any significance it's just to show that the real data you might get may have uh, features which you don't have to use so it's just to portray how we deal real world data so first let's import the libraries which is csv pandas numpy sklearn and plot libraries okay so here pandas and numpy play a great role in pre-processing of the data here you can see that what we are doing is first we are opening the csv file as i said i will share the csv file google drive link in the description and then we are taking the first row uh, in the CSV using the csv.reader first we save all the data uh, and through next iteration first we save all the column names uh, which you can see here y x1 x2 date and we place it in code uh, then we create a data frame using pandas given the data is reader and column is calls uh, so you know the columns are date y x1 and x2 then we do something we create a dictionary uh, corresponding to each column name and the data type we need them to be then we do df dot as type so in pandas uh, we can change the data type of each column so that's what we are doing here by providing a dictionary uh, df dot as type so after doing that if we display here is our data frame looking date y x1 and x2 everything is closed so that we can do mathematical operation this happens very important point in CSV the data you might get may be it may be look it may look like a number but uh, it might be important as string so it's uh, like it's advised to convert the data type as you want 
so here's the data one final look at the data date y x1 and x2 after showing the data let's define what are our x and y when so it's obvious but first uh, x1 and x2 columns are our x values and what we are trying to predict is y so here first we convert them to numpy arrays here also we are convert converting them to numpy arrays but as there is only one we are using df dot values so y is this and x is this then we train to split them uh, the usual way of trying to splitting uh, giving the test size as 0.3 which means 30 percent now comes another important part uh, in svr uh, it's it's a good algorithm but the issue is that you should hyper tune the model to find the best parameters possible so two of the parameters in svr are c and epsilon so we uh, define some st uh, standard values and what we try to do is here you can see two for loops right so we create each combination of all these values and see how they works and we select the best one so these are just parameters we use in svr okay uh, now we can see for c in c uh, array epsilon in epsilon array now we come to the part of svr so we had imported from sklearn svr so here svm from svm we imported svr so as i mentioned this svr comes from the concept of sklearn okay from the imported library here you can see we define each parameter c equal to c which is one of these elements epsilon is S epsilon which is another element from this array so we take each combination then we use something called correlation from data science what correlation helps us is is find the similarity between two values like the direction in which they are traveling <coughs> here you can see we are providing the x text x test value and predicting the value then we are taking the correlation between y test which is the actual value and the predicted value more the correlation means better the model is performing at this case now what we do is we create another data frame uh, using pandas itself this data frame contains the result of the hypertuning c value epsilon value and the correlation as i said more correlation means better the model now what we do here is uh, another functionality called sort values so here we sort the newly created hyper uh, tuned data frame uh, according to the correlation and from that you can see the correlation decreases the best c and epsilon values are 10 and 0 0.00001 so we choose them as the best parameters and then we go on and create our svr model using that uh, here you can see model is very good svr of kernel rbfc equal to 10 epsilon which we got coming to kernel so what kernel does is here you can see this is non-linear data right so uh, dealing with real world cases the data would be multi-dimensional but to implement this algorithm first we have to decrease the dimension so kernels helps us in dimensionality reduction uh, rbf is one of the kernel there are several kernels rbf helps us uh, very well here so we are using rbf then we fit the model with x train and y train as usual now you can see we are predicting the values here using the predict function model as we are dot uh, predict uh, let's see how the model is performing right uh, as we are predicted is 22.53 actual value is 26.9 you can see the error also uh, here one thing you will be noticing here is that on a general basis even though there are errors the errors have a good small range so everything is inside a tube so that's the brilliance of svr algorithm now coming to another part we have created SVR, so I am parallelly creating a linear regression model just to show you the comparison, uh, which is a simple uh, way of doing that from SKL in itself. After creating the linear regression, here you can see the correlation and the mean squared error. SVR is showing better correlation and the least mean squared error, so SVR is better in this case. It's good to compare so that you can choose between algorithms. Now, coming to the final part of the video saving the model you created we are using pickle and saving it as an sav file so after executing this you can see here uh, we can get the data as a here you can see this is our model so you can go ahead and download this for later use so after downloading for your local use how to use this model <coughs> to load the model we use pickle itself pickle.load 
after the loaded model we can just predict as usual loaded model dot predict so you can see again we are predicting using the loaded model so that was the video i hope you have understood how to implement svr in a real life case and the basic theory behind support vector regression thanks for watching do subscribe to professional cipher